welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, I'm making a video that I've wanted to make for a number of weeks now. You see, being a landscape photographer on YouTube is a bit different than just being a photographer because you have a number of more things to consider. Number one, you have to film yourself and you also have to make sure when you're filming yourself that it makes a storytelling so that somebody watching it actually can enjoy it. And then number two, you're actually putting yourself in front of the camera when you're normally behind the camera. So it got me thinking, has that changed over the last number of years? And rather just answer the question myself, I said what I'd do is I'd reach out to the community of landscape photographers here on YouTube and to get their thoughts in relation to this question. And I was really delighted that a number of the guys came back to me with some very, very interesting thoughts indeed. So sit back and relax and enjoy what other landscape photographers on YouTube think what it takes to be a landscape photographer on YouTube in 2022. Right, so the Spoonman asked me to give you some tips on uh, how to be a photographer on YouTube in 2022. So I guess this is aimed at vloggers, people who either already have a YouTube channel for landscape photography or just photography in general, or people that are thinking of starting a YouTube channel. So I've written down a few notes here for what it's worth. Right, so first of all, it seems pretty obvious, but I would say that the first thing that you would want to have in your bag if you are a photographer on YouTube is to be good at photography. Uh, that would help. And if you know yourself that you're a complete beginner, you know, maybe maybe you know that you might not be that good just yet. You might be one day if you put the hours in or you put the years in. So if you are thinking of starting a channel, you don't have to be an expert. You could always share your journey as a beginner, as a newbie, and show people your development because people do like to see that. Uh, because everyone's always developing at all times but yeah you will definitely have more confidence doing what you're doing if you feel like you really can produce good work so learn how to compose your images learn how to use your camera and learn how to process your images as well that will make you far more confident when you're trying to teach people if you are doing teaching in your videos how to get similar results to what you're getting but like i said if you are a total noob to this that's okay, you, you, you know, you can just say, well, I'm just figuring this out, here's what I've learned, and you can share with people how you came to that conclusion, what it was that, that taught you that lesson, and they'll probably enjoy seeing that process if you're entertaining. So, that brings me on to the next one, and that is, don't be lazy, like some landscape photography vloggers that we know out there. What I would say is, try and think when you're on location and you're shooting, Try and think, how can I make this better? How can I take this to the next level? Not just in terms of your actual photography, but also in terms of what you record on, onto video. So for example, I just recently went on a trip where I, I, well, Colin brought his canoe and all three of us paddled out to this place, which we could have got to probably a lot easier just by hiking, although it might have been a bit more dangerous, but it was more entertaining for the video to have us paddle out, even though it was a lot of hassle and, uh, you know, quite painful to do. But anyway, the point I'm making is if you can just always have it in your mind, how do I take this to the next level? How can I improve this image that I'm trying to capture? Or how can I improve this video clip that I'm trying to film? How can I take it to the next level and just, just make it better, whether it's getting the drone up in the air or getting down on the ground and shooting up or finding something to frame the shot? I'm sure if you get into that mental mindset of not being lazy and always thinking about how can I make this better, which you should do in everything in life, really. That's kind of a life lesson. But if you do it in your in your vlogs or in your photography, you, you'll just produce better work. Just automatically think that way and you'll produce better work. Hi, I'm Julian Baird, a landscape photographer and YouTube content creator. I think there's one bit of advice I would give to any photographer with a YouTube channel, and that is be yourself. Because there is one thing that you have that no other YouTube channel has, and that is, of course, you. Share your story, share your passion for your photography, because people will connect with genuine content from a passionate photographer much more than any other type of video. So tell your story. All right, what does it take to be a YouTuber in 2022, or more specifically, a photographer YouTuber in 2022? Well, unless you're dashingly handsome like myself, 
then it is very hard to make it in, uh, in YouTube. But what I would recommend is that you talk about or cover or kind of approach things that are new to the photography world. Try to find your niche. There is absolutely no point in copying what's already out there. And there's a lot of landscape photographers in a very small niche area. So it's getting a little saturated and most of us, including myself, we tend to do the same thing over and over again. Now and then you'll come across someone that's doing something quite unique or is doing it in a different way. The problem with photography is that it's all been said and done before. So you really have to approach it with a fresh, unique way. I'd also suggest that uh, I wouldn't get into YouTube for the money. Uh, it's more of a passion and eventually uh, the subscribers and the views will come if you're passionate enough about it and just stick with it. Just have fun with it. That's the main thing is if you're not having fun doing it, then you're not going to last very long. So and then the next thing I would say is if you get successful at this, if your channel actually takes off, you better make sure that whatever it is that, that you've done that people like, it's also something that you enjoy making because if it does take off and this becomes your, your living, guess what? You'll be doing this all of the time like I do. So one of the things I always made, made sure of right from day one is that I enjoyed putting all of the stories together, you know, whether it's a comedy skit or whether it's just talking to the camera or whether it's just being serious and sort of giving people a heartfelt inspirational talk, whatever it is, if you're not feeling it, the audience will know and they'll tune out. So if you're tuning out to yourself as you're watching it, if you're even tuning out to yourself as you're recording it, don't expect anybody else to, to be that engaged. So make videos that you enjoy making, both in the field and in the editing suite, because you will spend a lot of time in the editing suite. And I have a lot of fun editing my videos. I'm always laughing. I'm always enjoying the, the B-roll. There's always something that keeps me engaged and I have to watch through it dozens of times to, to get to the finished result. So uh, I, I can see that I would probably still enjoy doing this in five years just because that's that's the way I do things, but that's a conscious decision that you have to make. So be careful about the, the direction that you take because if it does take off, but you don't really enjoy it, you're kind of stuck, you know, you'll, you'll eventually burn out. Hey guys, my name is Mike. And I'm Chris. So our tip is to think about who is watching your videos and then decide on a target audience. If it's entertainment, that's great. And if it's teaching, that's great too. But make videos with a purpose. Don't try and film yourself just walking in front of the camera and talking about your settings. But who is the person that watches your videos? Is it a beginner that just wants to improve their photography? Are people just wanting some entertainment and want to see some quality storytelling? If you can answer these questions, you'll be able to create the type of videos your audience will watch every time you put one out. Which leads us on to the next thing, and that is to be authentic. So if you are creating a, a persona that is not sustainable, it's not really who you are, it'll eventually wear out. Now it's okay to start off like that. You know, we all try, the presenter route, we all kind of talk to the camera and try and figure out how we do this. So you will go through a phase of not being comfortable in your own skin, especially when you're watching yourself back on video, but eventually it becomes a lot easier and you get more comfortable with it. And the, the true you, the authentic you will shine through and hopefully people enjoy that, people like it. But because you have to continuously do this and it has to be sustainable, you really do have to be authentic, be real, and it'll be far less exhausting than trying to put up some persona. Even if you're doing silly skits and characters like I do, that, that doesn't matter. At some point, you always have to revert back to who you really are. And uh, if you just keep it authentic, it's going to be a lot easier. So thanks, Darren, for including me in this, mate. Really appreciate it. So the one thing that I would really suggest you do as a YouTuber in 2022, for me, is do it for the enjoyment. Because more than anything else, if you don't enjoy doing it, you won't keep it up. And that links to another piece of information that I want to give you. I'm going to give you a two for one. So if you're doing it for the love of it, it makes you want to do it more. And on top of that, 
you have to keep it consistent. You have to do it over and over again. You have to keep doing more and more and more. Every week, get out there and do it. I've only really found this this last year or so to keep consistent and consistently putting stuff out every week is the only way to prog progress in 2022. So my tip for being a, a somewhat successful photographer on YouTube is it's a bit of a counterintuitive one because you can chase the analytics and chase numbers and there are tools out there which will show you what's trending and what's popular and you can create these videos targeted towards specific audience members and grow your channel that way. Um, but that's, that's not how I do it and that's not how I would ever want to do it. Uh, so the tip that I would give, not necessarily to be the most successful YouTuber um, in history, but certainly to have longevity and to be happy in what you're doing. And that is to make videos that you yourself want to watch. Um, be authentic and have fun whilst doing it because by creating YouTube videos that you yourself would want to watch, you are far more likely to be passionate about what it is that you're filming um, and come across far more authentic and enthusiastic. And I think people relate to that. It's very personable, you know, show the misery, <laughs> show the happiness, show the joy, show the successes and show the failures, but make sure that you're passionate about what you're doing, passionate about what you're making. Um, and you'll have success. I mean, another tip, of course, sorry, Darren, taking over your video here. <laughs> but, you know, another tip as well is put 110% into your filmmaking. You know, even if you've only got one subscriber, make the video as if a million people are gonna watch it. And more importantly, make that video as if those one million people are watching you for the first time. So you wanna give a good impression. Make sure every video is, you know, you're only as good as your last video, is what I'm trying to say. So there you go, a few tips on how to hopefully be successful as a photographer here on YouTube. The next one is uh, don't be boring. Now I've just told you to be yourself. Well, what if yourself is boring? Well, the thing is, that's okay. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be a clown and be entertaining people all the time. I think we all know quite a few successful YouTube photography channels that are really, they're really quite boring but they're done quite well and that's the thing that you've got to pay attention to so uh, try not to be boring in that you would just be regurgitating the same things that everybody else does try and put your own spin on it and like i said you don't have to be a comedian you, you could even be a grumbly opinionated old fart some people might really enjoy that you know especially if you have valid points and you make sense don't be boring is a little bit of a tricky one. You're gonna to have to really think about that as you watch your material. Now, it could just be the way that you edit it. So you might be kind of a little bit boring in your subject matter. You know, you might be a bit of a monotone speaker or whatever, but if you really know what you're talking about and your work is really good, and if your B-roll is really good and the story that you build and the narrative that you create is really good, even if you're a bit of a boring character, the quality will still shine through. Hello and welcome to another video by me, Darren J. Spoonley. Hold on, hold on. No, this is a clip for Dazzler, for the, for the, the Spoon, the Jedi himself. He's asked me, what tip can I give you all out there in 2022 for vlogging, for photography, what have you? A tip. Oh, I have thought about this quite a bit because I fly by the seat of my pants. So my tip to you guys out there would be, be yourself. Just be you. Don't be ultra confident. Don't put it on. Don't pretend. Let it flow. Make mistakes. Enjoy it. And just be yourself. And then the last tip that I would give you, and I bet I'm the only one that's going to give you this tip. None of the other guys will give you this. And that is to take time off. So let's just say your YouTube channel takes off and things are going really well and you're trying to post one video a week, which is an exhausting pace, especially if your videos are a bit convoluted like mine are. Every now and then, it's good to take time off. And don't, don't feel bad about just disappearing for a month because you need to recharge your batteries both creatively, spiritually, mentally, physically. So often I'll just disappear for a month and that's because I'm out shooting you know I'll be going on a trip 
And because my videos take so long to edit, I, I just can't, there's not enough hours in the day for me to build up a, a backlog of videos that are already pre-posted and ready to go out. I just, I just do not have that time. So when I go on a trip for a month or whatever, I will just disappear off of YouTube and give people a break from me because if they're used to seeing me every single week, even if they really enjoy that content, you will kind of oversaturate yourself a little bit and just become too regular. I think even though people complain when I disappear, when I come back, they're glad to see me back and they know, oh, he's, out, he's been out shooting and he's, he's gonna come back with some new stuff. And I always do, I always come back with something new and interesting. So don't ever feel that you have to always post every single week. It's okay to take a month off, disappear, recharge your batteries, give the audience a little bit of a break from your face. And then when you come back, you come back refreshed, stronger, they've missed you a little bit, and then you get back into the swing of things with renewed energy. So that is my uh, list of tips. I, I hope you found that useful. And uh, if you become a YouTube sensation, please don't forget who gave you this advice back in the day. Some fantastic bits of information there. I hope you'll agree in relation to what was shared by all the other photographers. I'd really, I'd really like to thank them for taking the time to put this together, not only just to send their thoughts, but to actually create the video as well and to send it back to me. And they're all very, very busy. Uh, lifestyles and time. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If it's your first time on my channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlong gefallen.